You're listening to What She Said on Canada Talks. Hello there, I'm Christine Bentley in studio with Kate Wheeler. And joining us now is an award-winning Canadian woman who is on a mission of mercy for Asian temple elephants who are being mistreated in her country of birth, India. And she is about to launch a film exposing what she calls an untenable atrocity. Welcome, Sangeeta Ear. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Nice to be with you. So when did you first become aware of what was going on? I was born and raised in this culture. And what <coughs> happened in 2012 when I was visiting my um, uh, country, my father had died, and I was invited to... Um, you know, witness an elephant that had actually fallen into a trench and they were rescuing this elephant. And that very same day, they took me to this temple and there were festivities happening and tem um, elephants were actually encircling the temple. And I thought to myself, what is going on here? All four legs shackled and there were wounds and such deep gash and cuts and the elephants were whipped to you know, to do whatever they thought they, you know, the elephant should do. And these were all male tuskers, this majestic animal just completely broken in spirit. And it just gutted me. And I started doing some research and I discovered that they had about 3,000 um, elephants or 5,000 elephants in captivity throughout India and 700 of them in this state that I was born and raised in, the southern state of Kerala. And when I did further research just this past year, I realized that 300 of them had already died within a matter of three years because of the way they were treated, the neglect, and the torture that they were subjected to. Now, and I the, said, i got to do something. But the elephants aren't actually needed for the religious ceremonies? Absolutely not. And that is the key point because, you know, in the name of culture and religion, uh, people are actually using this animal for commercial purposes and there are these clever craftsmen that are actually minting money and the masses are so mesmerized and they're just so caught up in this, um, you know, in the craziness that goes on. In fact, when you take a look at the crowds, the crows and lakhs of people as they call it in India, we call it in the millions in such close proximity to these animals, all four legs tightly shackled, and they carry thousands of kilos of weight on their back when their backs are not designed for this. How can a god sit back and witness his creations, if that's what they are trying to use for religious purposes, suffer like this? So, Sangeeta, is it the laws that are the issue, or is it the enforcement? It's the enforcement. There are amazing regulations in India. And as a matter of fact, they're one of the most compassionate countries, at least that's what they're supposed to be. And yet you have the religious factions, you've got the commercial interests, and you've got all of the other vested interests that are just focused on what's in it for them, ignoring what's in it for the greater good of the elephants. And they're using the name of culture and religion you know, and you know, what is amazing is we talk about the Holy Bible and tell me if there's one scripture where they use, where they suggest that you need to use elephants, the Holy Bhagavad Gita, that's what I was, you know, it's a philosophy, not a religion. There is not one single scripture that says you got to use elephants to you know, um, empower people or to worship God. It's all concocted by human beings. At the end of the day, what has happened is, you know, there's this one king, I'm not sure if you know about the caste systems in India. Mm -hmm. It's just so deeply ingrained in people's minds. And so there are a group of castes that are not allowed into the temple, or it used to be that way about a hundred years back. And one of the kings decided, I'm going to have all my subjects take a look at our deity, our God. So what he did was, 
He had one elephant. He mounted the deity on the elephant's back, and he brought this elephant just outside the temple for people to see. This is like 100 years back. And then there were real wealthy people that said, okay, we're going to treasure these animals. So they owned one or two or three elephants, not individually, but, you know, in that state. And these animals were taken care of so beautifully. They were revered and literally, you know, because... Lord Ganesh, who is got the elephant face, he's considered to be the embodiment, you know, and so it's like they brought out the deity, and ever since then, peop I mean, the festivities have grown enormously. There used to be one festival. Now there are 3,000 festivities throughout the year, more than two-thirds of them using elephants. And the thing is, because of the decline in the captive elephant population, they are just overworking. It's like overworking and getting underpaid. They are overworking these poor animals. They don't get proper rest. They don't get proper water. No food, nothing. It's all about making money. So how many uh, Asian elephants are there left? So in the wild, there are approximately 30,000. That's it. They've been listed as endangered species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, by the IUCN, which is a United Nations body. And so out of the 30,000, almost 23,000 of them are in India. So the biggest concern now is that because the captive elephants are dwindling in numbers, these vested interests are lobbying the government of India, which has actually placed a ban on elephant capture because it's an endangered species, and they're lobbying to lift the ban because they are now saying that, oh, because we had lifted the ban for so many years, now they're increasing in numbers, and there's a human-elephant conflict. So there are so many ele uh, elements. So just to make it clear for our listeners, we are talking here about Asian elephants. We also have then African elephants, of which I think there are only 400,000 left. Yes. And these African elephants are the ones that are being poached for ivory. Exactly. Not the Indian elephants. Well, it's a combination. I mean, at the moment, in terms of the ivory poaching risk, it's the African elephants that are in deep trouble because there's a... a, a a huge majority of Chinese businessmen that have established themselves and, uh, dare I say, have invaded um, the wildlife zone and they're going in there in the form of helping, you know, the African people and extracting oil and creating job opportunities. Meantime, they're also taking advantage of the laxed regulations and the corruption and they're killing animals, the elephants in particular, to the extent that it's like 35,000 elephants are being poached every year. We've been talking for almost 15 minutes. One elephant has already been poached, even as we are talking. That is just alarming that in terms of the greed and selfishness, people have just completely forgotten that our survival depends on the survival of all species. It's not just about you know, what we get out of them. Because aside from the utilitarian values, these animals provide tremendous value for the survival of our species. They drop dungs, and in, that, in those dungs, they disperse seeds. And these seeds are necessary for the rainforest growths. The rainforests provide us with oxygen to breathe. 28% of the oxygen we breathe comes from the rainforest. That's one thing. And without oxygen, how can we survive? The number two thing is that, you know, the dungs are actually, they have dung mites. And the, um, the little birds, they survive on the dung mites, so they need food. And then when elephants walk through the weeds in the jungle, they create pathways for so many other. So it's the whole ecosystem depends on the elephants. It's not just the utilitarian value or the tusks that really matter. So what do you hope that the film gods in shackles which you're currently editing right yes what do, are, do you hope that it's going to achieve oh i'm first of all it's going to just be um it's going to rattle some cages and ruffle some feathers because the status quo are just so clinging on to their cultural and religious uh, deceptive way of promoting what they're doing so that it's going to shake them up secondly i'm hoping that 
well, the next thing I'm going to do is walk tour around the schools within Kerala and teach our younger generation that, listen, guys, it's not about the entertainment, what's, what's in it good for you, but we're actually harassing these animals. We are treating them with utter cruelty and brutality. You guys need to know the behind the scenes what's happening. Then, obviously, we're planning to do this in theaters because in India, you know, Bollywood uh, theaters, our people just are fanatical about theaters. Then we are submitting it into the the festivities basically creating awareness is our number one step number two is now that people have seen all the atrocities being committed we are hoping to create a sanctuary in Kerala where we can then slowly but surely even if we started releasing five elephants per year into the zone you know and I am willing to do whatever it takes to raise money for them and that is what this film is supposed to do is to get to a point where not just people are aware but are taking action and so I've launched this Indiegogo campaign. Okay, so the Indiegogo campaign is to raise the, the, the what, you need another $30,000 to finish the film? How's it going? Yeah, it's going great, actually. Within just a week, we have raised about 16%. We are close to $5,000 now, and we still have about uh, four or five weeks left. Um, and so I'm ecstatic about the way the awareness is spreading our pre-production on the Indiegogo campaign. So it's indiegogo.com slash projects slash gods in shackles. And that's what it's designed to do is to portray that gods are actually being shackled in the name of culture and religion. You know, these animals are being tortured. And so for pre-production, we had a very successful campaign. And now for the post-production, we are, you know, we still need to raise a significant chunk, which is close to $25,000. So um, that's what we're hoping to do in the next little while. You're watching What She Said on YouTube. Do you hope that all the editing is done? When when we when will people start to see it, and where will they start to see it? Okay, so our first cut, we are hoping to have it done by the end of May, and then I'll be flying back to India to do fact checking and make sure that you know all of my scientists and everybody what they have said are comfortable with it, and then we are going to officially have a world premiere in India in October 2014. And 2015. After, 2015, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a Toronto premiere. We're going to have a Washington and New York premiere also. Well, you've worked very hard because you say there's, what, 400 hours already filmed, 35 interviews so far. That's... That's, That's all, something. Yeah, I've been working, thank you, and the, I've been working on it for the last three years, gathering research, and you know, as a journalist, you know, we have to be objective and balanced, but it's hard, because it is indeed an emotional issue, isn't it? It is. You know, because when it comes to animals, and you see the way they suffer, I know, Christine, you love elephants, and so it's just a deeply moving thing for all of us that That's we what, love animals to begin with, right? Well, that was one of my first memories, because my father was posted to India, so my very first birthday party, I was on an elephant. Wow. Uh, it was, you know, just walked around, but I remember sitting in the saddle with a bunch of other little and Now you don't do that. <laughs> now, I don't. <laughs> now I don't sit in the saddle. No. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sangeet Iyer. Thank you very much for coming in and talking to us, and good luck. We'll keep, a, we'll keep our eyes open for Gods in Shackles. And again, if you want to connect uh, with Sangeeta, uh, go to the Indiegogo campaign and look that up. That's the name of the film. God's in shackles. It's under projects there. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Good to see you guys. Click the channel subscribe button for full-length interviews and more from What She Said here on YouTube.